Hey everybody, it's David. This week, the first week of December 2024, represents one year since we started our journey into early retirement. And I thought, well, this would be a great time to go back and look at the five things that I thought could potentially run early retirement for us or anyone else and kind of see how we're doing so far. So, hey, let's talk about it. Just to give you a little bit about my backstory, I was laid off at the end of 2023 and December 4th of that year was my actual separation. And it was not long after that where I did a video about the five things that I thought could potentially go wrong in early retirement and ruin it. And I'm going to make it a new tradition that every year around my anniversary date, I'm going to go and look back at how we're doing in regard to those five things. So that's what we're going to talk about. So what was the first thing? It is something that I'm sure you may be concerned about when you think about retiring, which is <laughs> running out of money. This first year has been kind of a weird one. In some ways, it's been expensive. I've had a lot of expenses that I didn't necessarily think about, but we still have been great. Uh, let's see, we remodeled our bathroom, which was a, a fun project. We bought a new couch, which we really needed. It was over 20 years old. We got a new uh, washer and dryer, also over 20 years old. And we bought e-bikes, which have really been fun to do together. And unfortunately, we had some medical expenses that I had not necessarily anticipated. But overall, what a fantastic year when it comes to the stock market. I, I went in and pulled the statement for from December 4th until yesterday, and we are up over 25% in our returns. So as you might imagine, that has been a great return, which has allowed us to buy things and do things that have just been really great in this early retirement period. I've also had a mental shift where I'm no longer chasing those big returns moving the portfolio to a more uh, conservative mix. I did a video that shows where we are in our mix. It'd be down in the description. I do encourage you to watch that. Also been paying for this early retirement through the rule of 55, which has been fantastic. I learned about the rule of 55 back in 2017. And basically in a really short nutshell, what it does is allows you if you quit if you get laid off or you leave your job starting the year you turn 55 or older, you can take money out of your 401k without penalty. I also have a video on that down in the description. I encourage you to watch it and learn more. The second thing was a concern over the potential for a stock market crash. And thankfully, that did not happen in the last 12 months. It, it actually has been the opposite with the stock market going up, as I just mentioned. There was a, a really short one. And that was actually great because the stock market dipping for that, it was just a couple of weeks or something. It helped us to stress test our portfolio. One of the really important things to do when you are retired is to quit chasing returns. Now I look out the window here almost every day and I see squirrels. <laughs> and what do squirrels do? You know, they are saving those nuts to get ready for when winter comes and food is no longer as plentiful. And that is really important when thinking about early retirement and something that I thought about for a very long time. What am I going to do to quit chasing returns and to store up those nuts for when the stock market crash happens, which we know will. So this year, in a year of great growth in the stock market, I'm trying to do a better job about being more conservative with the portfolio and tucking away more cash and building up those bonds for when that crash does come, that we will be prepared. And I'm thankful that for this first year, there was not one of those crashes. The third thing that I talked about was the potential for a health emergency and how that would impact our finances. Well, Unfortunately, I experienced that back in May. I've talked about it a little bit on the channel, but just in a nutshell, I went in for a regular health check and ended up having to have quintuple heart bypass surgery. And unfortunately, the surgery was not successful. Uh, three of the five bypasses ended up failing. I had to go back and get some stents. Bottom line, from a medical expense perspective, I looked at it this morning, and the insurance company was billed $350,000 for our total medical expenses year to date, 
what a number that is. Our actual out-of-pocket medical expenses for so far this year, I've got it written down here, have been $23,452. That is our COBRA plus our deductible. So that was a huge expense. Fortunately, as someone who is a cancer survivor and someone who had this on my list of five, a health emergency was something that I was concerned about and had savings to be prepared for. Often when people ask you about early retirement, that's what they say. What are you going to do about health care? What are you going to do about a health emergency? My lesson from this year is to be prepared for that scenario. Have a bucket of savings ready. Make sure you have solid insurance and that you're ready for those medical what ifs. Next year, we're going to be on the ACA medical plan through healthcare.gov. I did enroll in that recently. So it would be very interesting a year from now to hear how that has gone as far as our expenses. The fourth thing that I was concerned about as far as ruining early retirement is a loss of purpose or boredom. You know, when you have a job, your day is pretty structured. You have a, a set time that you go in, you have a structure of what you do during the day, and you have a purpose. But in early retirement or in retirement, you lose all that. So it's totally up to you to figure out how to fill your time. You can do that by doing nothing, but that is not good. I think and the fourth thing that I was concerned about was a loss of purpose and maybe a time of boredom. A lot of people, when they retire, they obsess and think about the moment when they're going to walk out and be done. And don't put a lot of planning into what you do next. And that can lead to a lot of negative situations. I do think it's really important that you are not just retiring to get away from something, that you're also retiring to move towards something. And to do that, you have to be very intentional with how you spend your time on a daily and weekly basis. For us, we hit the ground running. We love traveling. We love hiking, being outdoors, and specifically, we really love the national parks. So we planned out and we went to 11 national parks right off the bat. I would say my favorite is uh, Yellowstone and Teton. That trip was just absolutely amazing. Back in May, we went to three national parks in one trip. It was uh, Canyonlands National Park, Arches National Park, and Capitol Reef National Park. And what a terrific time that was. So travel has been a great way that we have filled some time and had some tremendous adventure in this last year. In addition to travel as part of being intentional with their time, my wife had this fantastic idea for this thing that we call Fun Fridays. And what we do is every Friday, we plan out something that we are going to do together that is uh, different and fun. It can be going to uh, a nice restaurant in the afternoon, which is great because there aren't a lot of people there. It can be a uh, day trip to a state park that's nearby. Just basically, we're making sure that we're being intentional that every Friday we do something to get together that is fun. In addition to just being busy and doing things, it's also important to still have a purpose to give back. It's something that is important to both my wife and I. My wife volunteers a couple days a week, one day at a hospital where she's a volunteer, and another day with an organization called Cleats for Kids, where they give away athletic shoes for kids in need. For me, it's been this thing called the Bike Club. And Bike Club has been fantastic. It's an after-school program where you ride bikes with kids. They're learning how to ride bikes. These are both uh, middle school kids and elementary age kids. And the cool thing, if they stick through the entire program, they get a free bike at the end. And that has been absolutely terrific. A secondary thing with volunteerism like that, that is great, is the friends and the people that you meet through that community. It has really made a difference for us in being intentional again in our week, but also helping to have that social interaction in that sense of community. Another big part of my sense of purpose is you, you and this YouTube channel, having the goal of creating a video once a week and hopefully in even some very small way, making a difference to help people actually reach financial independence, retire early or do the best to have their best life now. That is part of my purpose and why I make these videos. Some videos get lots of views. Most of them get very few views. But really, if there's just one person that maybe improves their life even a little bit as a result of a video like mine or other people like me that are talking about these topics, 
I think it's all worth it and it's part of my purpose. And let me take a moment again to thank you for being part of this channel. You know, the comments that I've received, the thumbs up, everything like that has helped me with my purpose and is helping me with this transition into early retirement. I just can't thank you enough. And the fifth thing, that final thing is fear. And I know that fear is something that is keeping many people from stepping into early retirement. It is keeping many people from taking those steps needed to even retire at a traditional time. I think we should see fear as a gift, as something that can help us learn from the past and also prepare for the future. If you're afraid of not having enough in your finances, well then save a little more. If you're afraid of having a health situation when you move into retirement, well start getting healthy. Start taking care of your health. Go out there and get that heart scan to make sure everything is okay there. Let fear be something positive that makes your future even better. Be prepared for those worst case scenarios and know that, hey, you're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Don't be fearful. Go out there and live that extraordinary life that you were intended to have. So that's it. Those were the five things that I thought could potentially run our early retirement. A year from now, I will do this video again and look back and see how we are doing on year two of early retirement. Now let me say with one year down, it has been fantastic. Even with all the challenges that we have experienced, I would not change it. I am glad that we made the decision and I'm looking forward to even more adventures in the years to come in our retirement. And I'm especially looking forward to you being a part of it here at David in Progress. Thank you again so much for watching and thank you for being part of my journey.